My name is Daniela Horn. I'm currently with the Institute for Neural Computation at Ruhr University Bochum in <coughs> Germany. Today I talk about fully automated traffic sign substitution in real-world images for large-scale data augmentation. What is this talk about? The idea is to automatically generate realistic images for training purposes. This is meant to be an augmentation technique rather than an attempt to fully replace real-world image data. So the main application is to enhance small data sets or to increase the number of traffic sign samples for certain classes that may be underrepresented in a given data set for which images might be hard to come by. The proof of concept in our case is the generation of traffic sign images resembling those of the German Traffic Sign Recognition Benchmark dataset or GTSRB for short. In doing so, we want to expand the natural variance that comes with illumination and weather changes in natural environments and ultimately receive a more robust training dataset. As this paper extends our earlier work, let us first catch up with the generation process so far. Last year we proposed a style transfer technique that translated between icon-like depictions and lifelike images of arbitrary traffic signs. We chose a cycle gun architecture to solve this task and introduced two types of cycle gun. The first one was trained on all 43 classes of the GTSRB training set and their respective cartoon samples. This cycle gun was used to then generate complete synthetic data sets covering all trained classes. The second cycle gun version was trained on all GTSRB classes but one. In order to prove that the cycle gun can abstract from similar structures, it was then used to successfully generate the missing traffic sign class. With a given traffic sign sample, one can easily generate other images of the same class when manipulating the cartoon representation. As the cycle gun has learned to encode background information as well as illumination and motion blur in the background color of the cartoon image, new snippets can be created by simply changing that unicolored background and transferring it back to the lifelike domain. As you can see in the figure, not only the background of the lifelike generated images changes, but also illumination and motion blur are adapted accordingly. However, while our cycle gun is able to deduct these artifacts, the backgrounds themselves are far from realistic. When analyzing a number of generated backgrounds, we also found a lack of consistency for larger structures such as buildings and an undeniable preference for vegetation as background motive. So the obvious solution was to use the generated traffic signs on real world backgrounds instead. But how to make sure everything fits together seamlessly? Well, we decided to use original traffic sign images of the GTSRB and, while keeping the background, substituting the traffic signs by generated ones. Our generation pipeline is built around the already existing cycle gun, so no further training routine is necessary. The process can be split into two parts, extraction, in which we take all necessary information from a real-world sample, and composition, in which we take a simple icon of the new traffic sign and reassemble the substitute. The extraction process starts with the sample from the GTSRB. The category of the depicted traffic sign should match the substitute, that is, if we want to generate a restriction sign, we need a random restriction sign sample to replace for best results. We let the cycle gun transfer the given sample into its cartoon representation. This way it is much easier to extract the necessary information for later steps. From the cartoon image, we can extract the binary mask separating for and background of the image. And with the help of this mask, along with a rectified pictogram of the original traffic sign, we can calculate the homography, which is required to give the substitute the correct perspective. Now that we have all the information we need, a simple icon of the new traffic sign is chosen. In this case, we decided to change the speed limit from 70 km an hour to 120. Using the previously calculated tomography, the icon is tilted into the perspective of the original sample. The generated cartoon background and the tilted icon are then joined to receive a new cartoon image with the same pose and encoded background as before, but with a different class. Our cycle gun transfers the reassembled cartoon image into a lifelike domain. While the traffic sign itself has the correct perspective, blurriness and illumination, the background lacks sharp edges and minor details. Therefore, the last step is to cut out the generated traffic sign and, using our binary mask again, cross-fade it with the original background. The resulting image shows a well-generated traffic sign on a realistic background. 
With this method, we have created different training datasets with which we conduct a number of experiments. Each training dataset serves as a different purpose, which I will explain shortly before looking into the experiments. The first dataset is our original training dataset of the GTSRV. It comprises real-world images of 43 traffic sign classes and serves as our baseline for all experiments. As you can see, the sample size of the different classes is highly variant, which is potentially problematic for underrepresented classes. The next two training sets use the overall same number of training samples as the baseline, but split them equally between the classes. This leaves 149 samples per class. While the dataset called previous was generated with the more basic method presented in our earlier publication, we chose the same distribution for our standard generated dataset for direct comparison to our earlier work. Speaking of direct comparison, we do not only want to compare ourselves to our own earlier work, but ultimately directly to real-world images. So it only made sense to use the original GTSRB sample distribution in another fully generated training set. We call this dataset imbalance due to the unbalanced classes. One main idea of synthetic training images is to generate bigger datasets than currently available. So the question is, will big numbers of generated images lead to better classifier performance when tested on real images? In order to find out, we generated another training set with 5,000 samples per class, which is 10 times bigger than the previously presented datasets. One last, but maybe most important aspect has not been taken into account so far. We see our method as data augmentation technique rather than replacing existing real image data. We want to use it to strengthen underrepresented classes, for example. And as we've seen in our baseline dataset, there are quite a few here. So the last dataset is a mixture of the complete original baseline samples and synthetic images generated on top to increase the number of every class until it is level with the most frequent one. Now that we've got our datasets, let's have a look at the experimental setup. All experiments have a similar setup. We used a multi-class support vector machine on histogram of oriented gradients features to classify real-world traffic science images. Each SVM has been trained on a different training set, but all classifiers are tested on the same test set comprised of unseen images of the GTSRB dataset. In order to compare the datasets to each other, we have decided to use the same hyperparameters as in our previous work, aiming not for peak performance, but for proper comparison and understanding of the training data. With this in mind, we conducted a number of different experiments. The first set of experiments examines training on generated images in all classes. The results are shown for the five traffic sign categories, where a category encompasses all traffic signs of the same appearance. Warning signs, for example, all have a triangular shape and a red border. The table shows the category-wise classification accuracy of six different training sets. The leftmost column is our baseline. The next shows the results of our previous work. All other columns refer to newly generated datasets according to the composition details I've just given. The best result for each category has been highlighted. Looking at the total accuracies, we see that every classifier trained on a new dataset shows better performance than our previous method. The category D restriction, which is originally underrepresented both in number of different traffic signs as well as in the amount of training samples, clearly profits from variations introduced by the biggest dataset SVM5000. It also becomes apparent that the rightmost classifier, which was trained on combined real-world and synthetic images, has the best result in almost all categories, and ultimately even outperforms the baseline classifier. The second set of experiments deals with the replacement of single class only. Using the second type of previously described cycle guns, we generated samples of an unseen traffic sign class. Apart from this traffic sign class, each of the dataset comprises real-world images. Or short, with the exception of the replacement class, all datasets resemble the baseline. The table shows some results for the replacement of the no entry for truck sign. The highlighted row denotes the replaced class. Other table rows refer to the most significant positive and negative changes with respect to the baseline classifier, 
for bold entries highlight deviating accuracies. We can see that all new classifiers maximize the accuracy of the generated class, but other class accuracies are influenced as well. In the given case, actually more than half of the dataset classes are affected by the replacement. While changes to other classes can be both positive and negative, most differences are of minor importance. A final glance at the total accuracies shows overall slightly worse numbers than the baseline classifier. The replacement of the slippery road sign clearly increases the accuracy of the generated class too. This effect scales with the number of generated images, especially for SVM 5000 in which the original class size of just 240 images is increased to 5000 samples, the skewed distribution leads to perfect classification results for the by far most frequent class, while other classes lose accuracy. A quick look at the overall performance shows similar but slightly better total accuracies than the baseline, while our previous approach has a little lower total accuracy and significantly worse performance for the replaced traffic sign class. In the last experiment, we replaced the direction sign pass right. In this case, the replacement decreases the accuracy of said class with respect to the baseline, but clearly outperforms our previous data augmentation approach by more than 10 percentage points for each new composition. Contrary to the other two cases, pass right is one of the most frequent classes in the baseline dataset. So instead of generating double or triple the original amount, we are actually reducing the sample size for SVM pref and SVM gen. While this reduction does play a certain part in the classifier performance, we noticed that direction signs are generally more difficult to handle by the cycle gun and therefore by the classifier using the synthetic images. However, other than before, hardly any non-generated class is affected by the replaced one. The overall performance again is better than our previous method, but slightly below the baseline result. Let me conclude this talk with a quick summary. We've presented a fully automated image substitution technique for traffic signs. Our method generates images that can represent a number of recognition problems found in natural image data, such as illumination changes and camera artifacts like motion blur or depth of field. We see our approach primarily as a data augmentation technique and have shown that the enhancement of a real-world dataset with our synthetic images can increase the classification results in comparison to the purely real-world dataset version. We cannot only generate learned traffic sign classes, but traffic sign images with arbitrary pictograms of learned categories. This includes fake signs, and as you can see here, I took the liberty of creating custom traffic signs borrowing parts of this year's IV logo and location-related symbols to generate realistic fake traffic signs. Thank you for watching.